Hey folks, Ty Cohen here, and it's actually kind of wet and, and a little bit cold out here in North Carolina right now, so really not my type of weather. I prefer the sun and, and just to uh, just to be able to have the warmth there, but, but I'm also a person who believes in, you know, your day, your life is whatever you choose to make it, so we're going to act like it's nice and sunny right now. We're going to act like it's 85 degrees, 87, because I think that's bearable, right? That's, that's not too hot, not too cold, uh, no matter where you're at. So speaking of that, let me know where you're watching from right now. If you can use that questions box and just put that in there. We've got Delroy. Good afternoon, Delroy. We've got Chicago. Anthony, what's the weather like in Chicago? It's got to be got to be pretty similar, huh? At least, if not cold. So he says it's pretty cold and raining. Right. Wow. How ironic is that? Uh, Javid is in London. Javid, I'm guessing that it's probably raining in London. You know, every time I go out to London, the foot, no matter how long I stay, the entire stay for me is raining. And then, like the last day, as I'm heading back to the airport, it seems like the sun wants to come out. So my timing must be terrible. I don't know what's going on. But uh, what's it like? Is it cold or is it warm out there? It's got to be cold in November, right? Mexico, says Phyllis. Phyllis, what, what's that like out in Mexico right now? All right, Mexico, I tend to get great weather out there. Uh, Joe says, uh, okay, so Joe is watching from Ecuador, warm and sunny, clear skies, fresh breeze off the mountains. That's beautiful. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's what I'm talking about. It's a bit cold, but not very cold, says Javid, okay, out in London. Beautiful and sunny, 75, says Phyllis. That's, that's actually pretty good. Uh, cold and damp, says Roberto. Yep, so that's what we're seeing here. About 45 degrees, says KH, H. Pill. That's where we're at. We're about 45 degrees as well. Uh, Gail is in Georgia. Okay, I'll actually be out in Georgia in a couple of weeks, out in Atlanta at a mastermind. Uh, event so that's pretty cool let's see what else who else do we have here we've got a lot of people that are watching that are that are joining us right now I'm pretty excited about this because the young lady that I'm gonna bring on as today's guest is someone that I have been playing mental tag with for lack of a better word for a while meaning that I've been meaning to bring her on and ask her to share some of the things that she's doing um, just online in general, in the e-commerce space, publishing space, right? She does a little bit of everything, and she does all of this stuff very well. So I've been meaning to to bring her on, and I think we spoke a few times about it, but it never really materialized, right, until recently. And recently we met somewhere, um, I forget where it was. I can't remember, and I'll ask her when she comes in, but it was might have been like the Marketer's Cruise, or it might have been Traffic and Conversion Summit out in San Diego. But um, she recently had re reached out to me about some other things, and I said, you know what? This would be the perfect time for us to get you in front of my audience and, and literally, you know, get you to spill the beans on what you're doing. I think the process that she's going to share with you today is something that's fantastic. And it's kind of ironic because someone was just asking me uh, last week, how do you do this? And to be honest with you, I have no clue. So I'm going to be taking notes and watching myself because this is something definitely that I want to get involved with because it's simple, it's easy, and it's pretty fairly quick to get started with. All right. So with that said, we're about five minutes into this thing. I want to bring my guest on again. She's someone that's been in the publishing space, the e-commerce space, for many, many, many years. I'll let her tell you, but I've known her for it seems like an eternity, which is you know a long time in this space. Uh, I've I've looked and watched behind the scenes at what she's done. I am probably going to admit right now that I've even got some cool ideas from her. First time she's probably ever heard this from me. And um, I think she's just got a very warm and loving spirit. So with that said, Amy, are you there? I am here, Ty, and thank you for that really kind and warm welcome. Much appreciated. And uh, I, I just, uh, you're right, we've been playing tag. I'm so glad you have me on here today and uh, get a chance to connect with you and your people. So thanks so much. And uh, it was funny you were talking about the weather because, you know, I'm up here in northern Idaho, and we actually had our, a ton of snow this weekend. We normally don't get snow this early in the year. So I was not surprised, like ready for that at all. <laughs> Too yeah, much snow. <laughs> interesting. I actually left Connecticut because of that, so yeah, I don't envy you at all right now. 
Yeah, it did rain today, and so a lot of it's melted off. But we'll have some more snow later in the uh, in the month, I'm sure. So you definitely one of the things up here is you have to have some type of outdoor activity in the winter. So I do like to ski. I started skiing a few years ago, so I'm going to start getting my skis out and, and at least try to make the most of it. <laughs> That's pretty cool. There you go. Turn lemons to lemonade, right? Exactly. Well, thanks so much. And again, I want to thank everyone for being here today. Um, I'm really excited because today I'm going to be sharing with you a really uh, easy and great way to repurpose existing content, uh, content you already have, content that you can get for free, other people's content even, into hot selling products. So really excited to be here. We're going to go ahead and get started. And you know, get out your pen and paper, take some notes, and if you do have questions, feel free to put them in the box, and we'll either get to them as we go along, depending on, you know, how things flow, or, of course, we'll get to them at the end as well. So thanks again for joining me, and that's a couple pictures of me. I'm a six-figure publisher, content marketer, e-commerce seller. As Ty mentioned, I do do a little bit of everything. And I live up here in northern Idaho with my husband and two cats, and that's uh, Harvey there on the left. He's a bit bigger now, and Charlton, my other cat there on the right. And uh, Harvey even has his own Facebook page, so you can do a little search for him, but he, uh, he, likes, uh, he likes the camera for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this picture here on the left is me and my husband. This is actually, looks like I think one of the winters, uh, not too cold, but you know, definitely we look like we're a little bit bundled up there for sure. So today I want to share some really cool things for you and with you, and I want to be talking about why now is the time to leverage the hottest income trend and how you can get started fast with this. There's three really great strategies I'm going to share with you to get started fast. And basically, you're going to be able to drag and drop your way to profitable products using free tools. So I'm going to be going over all of that with you here today. And I want to just take a moment and find out a little bit more about you. Are you a, a publisher? Have you been publishing any books? Do you create content? Are you an e-commerce seller? Are you just getting started? Uh, let me know. Just drop in the box. Let me know what, what you're doing right now, uh, what your area of interest is. And uh, I think what you'll see today with what I'm going to be sharing with you today, that this is something that you can do no matter what area you're in, whether you are a publisher, a, a writer, a, whether you're doing e-commerce, whether you're just getting started. Okay, great. Uh, Phil says just getting started. Gail is focusing on content. I see a number of people who are publishing books, uh, some e-commerce, uh, just getting into PLR, that's great. PLR is private label rights and that's content that you can purchase then you can license and I'm actually going to be talking about that a little bit today too. IV is focusing on journals. I love journals. Uh, uh, they're part of what I like to call low content publishing and this also uh, ties a lot into low content publishing too which I think is great. So. No matter pretty much what you're doing, and this is going to, uh, you know, cover what I've seen a lot of people share here with e-commerce, publishing, PLR, and content, this is going to be a powerful and profitable strategy for you for this year as we close out this year and in the upcoming years as well. And I like to think about this as the perfect income stream because it's, it's really a hybrid model. I call it content-based e-commerce. And why? Because e-commerce, content publishing, and distribution are now wide open for everybody because of new technological advances. I mean, you know, you think of the technology that's been happening. I mean, 10 years ago, you know, Kindle, uh, you know, was just sort of starting to get, get going. I don't even think it was around 10 years ago. And uh, people were not reading on e-readers. And, you know, now we can see that things have changed. So there's been a lot of technological advances that have allowed people like you and me to take advantage of them. So it's not, it, you know, it used to be that you couldn't, put up things for sale unless you were part of a big company or you were uh, got an agent if you were doing publishing or if you know if you were in e-commerce if you you know you had to partner with uh, big companies and things like that and it was very hard to get distribution uh, now that's pretty much been solved we have the ability to get involved with not only e-commerce content publishing but also getting all of your your stuff out there in the worldwide marketplace quickly and easily and it's because of all these great technological advances that we've been seeing so I just want to go a few stats here uh, to statistics so you can just see how powerful this is uh, for example worldwide retail e-commerce sales are going to reach 
1.915 trillion this year. That's a lot of zeros. I was actually trying to see how many zeros that would be. <laughs> that's a lot. I think it's, it's at nine zeros, something like that. And yeah, this is actually... <laughs> I need a piece of that. Yeah, and and this this is this uh, e-commerce train is not going to stop. In fact, we're going to be seeing double-digit growth uh, through 2020, and I'm sure even beyond that. But it's forecasted to sales topping four trillion dollars. So it's 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 huge, and I'm sure you probably. Uh, purchase things online which is basically e-commerce buying something electronically I know I do all the time in fact it's really interesting because I've actually seen my own shopping habits really shift where I, tr I get a lot more now online and buy things online just because of the convenience factor and I don't have to you know go outside and deal with crowds and things like that and so I'm not in the uh, you know in the minority there. Forty percent of worldwide internet users, and I actually think this is probably much higher in you know in America and the UK and places like that, have purchased goods or products online via desktop, table. Uh, I think that's supposed to be tablet. <laughs> or other online devices. So if you've purchased something online recently, let me know. Uh, uh, some of the things I like to get online are I get a lot of like non-perishable stuff. I'm actually looking for a new desktop computer. I've been looking at that online. Uh, you know, just all those types of things. So what we're looking at here is we're looking at more than 1 billion online buyers and that's projected to grow because more and more people now have access to the internet in terms of uh, not only computer access, of course, but mobile access, which has really been growing a lot too. And so play people all over the world now are able to log on online and purchase something and just with just a few clicks. So uh, again, the one click thing is great. I know on Amazon, I uh, had actually turned off my one click ordering button because I felt it was a little too much of a temptation. <laughs> But a lot of people like having that, that capability where you can just click a few buttons and then have something sent to you right away. So that's a little bit with e-commerce. We know e-commerce is, is huge and it's getting bigger and bigger. And I just also want to talk a little bit about publishing because I know a lot of you are doing publishing as well. And we're also seeing really strong sales with publishing too, especially with print. In fact, Amazon's print sales grew by 15% in 2016 and non-traditional publishing which is really self-publishing you know we're talking about publishing that's not through any of the big publishing houses that is a 1.25 billion dollar industry just in the United States and ind indie books are accounting for more than 42 percent of all ebook purchases so we're seeing not only our print sales growing but we're also seeing that more and more individuals like you and me are able to sell our books and not have to go through an agent or through a big publishing company and we're actually making going to start making up even more and more I think of those numbers so while publishing isn't maybe quite in the trillion dollar industry it is a billion dollar industry and it is growing as well So just that's just a brief little overview here of the idea that technology and some of these changes we're seeing equals profits and not just you know big corporation profits but profits for the little guy for you and me and the people who just do things part time or have businesses small businesses basically anyone can sell products online with today's technology uh, you can sell things on Amazon you can sell things on Etsy you can sell things through your own website with Shopify you can take payments directly with PayPal so e-commerce is available now. Also, anyone can sell content online with today's technology too. So you can sell your ebooks or print books on Amazon through CreateSpace, and you can even get massive distribution through Ingram because they, they partner with a lot of bookstores and libraries and get your content in there along with Lulu as well. So what we have now is we have these different tools available to the average person who wants to get their content out there or get their product out there. Okay, so as I said, this is a hybrid profit model, but one of the things, and you probably might have been be thinking about this already, is that no barriers can mean more competition. You know, like if you go and put a, a book on Amazon, there's probably some other books that are on there on that topic and you might find that it's a little bit more difficult to get it noticed. You still can of course and you can still do well but it takes a little bit more strategy now because there's a lot more competition both with books and with uh, e-commerce products. But one of the ways you can remove this competition is to be doing what 
with the help of technology what very few people are doing and that is putting together a hybrid of e-commerce with print-on-demand publishing. So we're talking about a physical product that contains visual and written content and it's also somewhat customizable and personalized. So you can get very into specific niches relatively quickly with this because you're doing print on demand. And this is what I like to call um, the secret sauce because you can use technological advances that not just everyone else is using like the ones I've mentioned, but there's now some new technology that you can use that's actually going to put you ahead of everyone else who's just doing ebooks or who is just doing regular e-commerce. And with that being said, now I want to just share with you a little bit more about some different niches that you might be in and this is going to show you the hottest market now and coming into the future using this hybrid model of, of, of e-commerce and publishing. And so some of these different niches are just as big if not bigger than uh, publishing it itself. For example, according to recent data, Am Americans spent around 11 billion dollars annually on self-help content. So people spend a lot of money trying to improve themselves. You know, self-help can cover, you know, mental, emotional, physical, but it's, it's huge. Uh, hobby and card games uh, are huge as well. Uh, card games and hobby games in the United States and Canada were over 1 billion in 2015. I mean, we know now, we know that video games are popular, but there's, now been, there's also been a huge resurgence in actual board games and card games and things like that. Because as we become sort of more immersed in digital stuff and technology, there are many people who are wanting to get back into do things that are more print based or hands on related. That's part of the reason we've been seeing this rise in print books too. And believe it or not, the psychic services industry is worth two billion per year in the US. You might be thinking, well, what's that? Well, psychic services industry are things like, uh, you know, tarot readers and, and uh, chat room places where people can talk to psychics or people who do tarot readings and things like that. So that may not be your cup of tea, but it is a really, really big market. So what I'm leading to here with all of this is talking about card decks because card decks are really a great folding in of this cutting edge technology and they also cover some of these hot niches. In fact, we're talking about bestsellers across a wide variety of niches and categories. So this is a rapidly growing industry and it's also one that because it is a hybrid and it is on this cutting edge of technology is not so saturated. So this is a great time to get in for early adopters. So why are card decks so popular? Uh, one of the reasons is, is they really appeal to a lot of different niche markets and I'm going to show you some examples here. They're also very easy to sell and distribute if you know how. So with some of this new technology, you can actually create and sell cards without having any artistic ability whatsoever. In fact, I'm going to show you here um, in a moment a brief demo of how I'm able to put together a card deck design and I'll tell you right now, I have no artistic ability <laughs> whatsoever. Uh, people would probably pay me not to design stuff because I just don't have any. And another great thing about card decks is they're really inclusive because you, because they fit so many different niche markets, you can reach people of all ages, demographics, and interests. So they work really well as either standalone uh, tools and products or as something that you're adding on to something that you're already doing. So, excuse me, for example, I'm going to show you some specific examples here, but I was just thinking, uh, somebody just said, we're writing a book on the golf swing. Well, you know what, having uh, card decks would be a great uh, companion with that where you could have a card decks for different uh, tips and techniques with golf, for example. Also, cards um, sell very well on multiple marketplaces. So not only on Amazon, but on a lot of other places as well. And as I was mentioning earlier, this type of hybrid product is not as saturated as other types of publishing. Let me just give you a few examples here. Uh, for example, if you type in educational cards on Amazon, you'll see that there's about 42,000 results. Now, if you type in educational books, you have 552,000 results. So there's like 10 times less the amount of results for cards as for books, uh, which shows you that the level of competition there is much, much smaller. 
Same thing for creativity. You type in creativity books, you get 61,000 results. Uh, it's about half of that if you type in creativity cards. And these are just a few examples. But because not everyone and most people who are publishing are not doing anything like this, the market is really wide open. So I want to just show you a couple of examples of different popular cards because you might be thinking, well, card decks, okay, but let me show you some examples of some that are super popular. So I talked about the psychic services industry. Uh, tarot and oracle cards are very popular. Uh, this is a really popular one called Earth Magic Oracle Cards. It's a bestseller and it's bestseller, uh, you know, 15 and 64 and two very popular categories. Affirmation and self-help. As I was mentioning, this is an $11 billion annual, uh, annually on self-help content. This is a really popular card deck. It's called Affirmators and it's uh, affirmation cards to help you without the self-helpiness. Uh, so I've taken a look at these. They're very popular. It's sort of like slightly snarky self-help cards that appeal to people who find some of the self-help stuff a little on the cheesy side. And this is a huge bestseller. Games. I was mentioning how people are really coming back to actual card games and, and board games and things like that. Uh, this card game, Exploding Kittens, and uh, this is a, a really fun card game. And this is has was designed by uh, Matthew Enman, who runs the Oatmeal. If you ever check out the Oatmeal, he has some really great cartoons. Uh, it, they actually received over eight million dollars in funding for this game from buyers on Kickstart. And it just was, I believe it's, it's been, unless it's been, you know, overturned since then, but at the time, this was like the, like the highest funded kickstart uh, in history because of, uh, of this, of the popularity of this. And they've also now started coming out with several expansion packs, but this is a card game called Exploding Kittens. Uh, Gillian says, yeah, I saw this on Amazon the other day. Yes, it's hugely popular. People love it. <laughs> And that's just really the tip of the iceberg. We have other types of card get, uh, decks as well. We have education decks. Uh, this is a deck of flashcards. Uh, so uh, preschool and, and kids can learn things like shapes and colors and things like that. Creativity decks, business decks, coloring decks. This is an example I, of I think which is really cool. It's uh, sort of like note card size cards and you can color them and they go in a little box. and you, Coloring books are super popular and they've been trending very heavily over the last few years. And I think this is a really good sort of add on to that because instead of having to take a big book with you, you if you're, you know, want to take something to, to color like you're waiting at the doctor's office or something, you could just take your card that you're working on. Uh, so these are just a tip of the iceberg here. Um, somebody says, I run a cosmetics beauty co e-com, how could I use card decks? Well, you probably know that um, makeup tutorials are extremely popular on YouTube. So you could put together a card deck where you would have basically like maybe a diag, like uh, you would have on one side like a, a picture of what it look, would look like if you were doing a tutorial like an eye makeup thing. And then on the back you could have uh, to, you know, the actual tutorial and the breakdown like a number diagram of what you would put where and what order. See, there you go. <laughs> I uh, can come up with card deck ideas for pretty much any business because they fit pretty much anybody who's doing anything. Oh, thanks, Anthony. You're welcome. <laughs> now, you might be thinking, okay, well, I don't have any content or I don't know what I would do because I don't really have anything existing yet. That's okay. I'm going to share with you right now three strategies for card deck profits that you can do with very little to no content. So the first thing is you can repurpose your existing content, and I'll show you an example of that. You can also repurpose public domain content. Public domain content is content that's free to, for the public to use, and it covers things that have now been, you know, long enough in the public domain where they work, they, you know, they've been available for a while and the copyright hasn't been renewed and they're now available in the public domain. And it also covers newer and more recent things too because, for example, the government puts a lot of content out and a lot of that content is in the public domain and that's new recent content. 
and private label rights content. I know someone mentioned here that they are wanting to make money with private label rights content. Well, this is a good way to repurpose private label rights content, and that's content that you would purchase, or they would have a license where many different you know people would purchase the same content, and then you would rework it or reuse it. I'm a huge fan of private label rights content because it really takes 99% out of the work for you. And again, with card decks, you know, you're not going to be finding the same old stuff out there because nobody is really using content in that type of way, and so you have this wide open playing field. So if you're a publisher or a content creator, you can repurpose your existing content as I was mentioning. You can do, um, if you are publishing journals, coloring books, puzzle books, or things that are more uh, content heavy like blogs or books, you can repurpose those into card decks. So for example, this is a uh, reference book called Cupcakes, and then what they did is they actually took it and they created a deck out of it. So you could take your book or your blog and create a deck. Like I mentioned, the person who was doing a, a book on golf swings, well, you could put together a deck on golf uh, swing tips. I have some cool decks on yoga postures is one of them, and I also have another one on Pilates. So things you know like that you could do. You can do recipes, self-help, sports. But again, it's, it's, it's wide open there. Now, you can also repurpose public domain content. Uh, quotes and images are really easy and great way to take and use and create card decks. Uh, for example, this is an example of a Cinderella tarot deck that was created using older artwork from fairy tales in the public domain. So you can see here we have Humpty Dumpty, and then we have other sort of fairy tale looking-ish types of uh, figures and these were all drawings in the public domain and they took them and they just created a deck out of them and assigned them to different uh, the, the tarot cards. So you could also repurpose private label rights. Uh, that's what I was talking about a moment ago where you can have some things like tips or other types of written content or graphics. Uh, this is an example here. So this is a private label rights on the left here, this is something you can buy where it's 2,300 cocktail recipes. I guess the, we're missing the R there. Uh, I found this on a private label site for $1.69. So they're selling 2,300 cocktail recipes you can reuse for $1.69. Now you look on the right, and here is a deck that somebody put together, the Craft of the Cocktail deck. And look, they have cocktail recipes on one side. And then on the other side, they have like a, a picture or a drawing, and then they have a little bit of information on the cocktail. And that's something that you could put together with, you know, this, these cocktail recipes. So you can take a $1.69 investment and take that and turn around and create a popular card deck with it. So these are just a few of the ways that you can take content that you purchase, content that's free, or content that you might already have laying around on your book or your blog, and pull it together into a card deck. So what I want to show you now, and I see we're getting some questions in, so you know, feel free to put those questions in there. And I'm going to go ahead here and uh, show you how easy it is to design a simple uh, card quickly and easily, even if you don't have any design experience. And then I'm going to also show you how you can upload that to one of the many places that I uh, go over further in my training where you can just upload your design and then it's accepted and you can just build your deck really quickly and really easily. So let me go ahead here and go over this and uh, get out of this. Okay, so I'm over here on a site called Canva. So I hope everyone can see my screen because I'm now out of the slideshow. We'll get back into that here in a second. And I don't know if you're familiar with Canva, but they do have some different versions, but they have a really great free version where you can use their templates and create a lot of different designs with them. And I really like Canva because it's super easy to use even for somebody like myself that really has no design experience. So let me just show you how easy it is here to create a card deck design. So what I like to do is go over here to custom dimensions 
and then it's going to ask me what dimensions I want and I'm going to put in some dimensions here and these are uh, in pixels and they're for a card deck size and I'll show you it also in a moment and momentarily about how I, I got to the, these specific pixel sizes as well but I'm gonna, and you can do pixels or inches but I like to do pixels because that way we know that we're going to get the um, print quality is going to be high enough okay so we, we're here and let's say we want to do a, a very basic card deck design let's say we want to do maybe some educational counting cards or something like that so let's go ahead here I'm gonna go ahead and pick a background and they have the colors here that you can do and you can do all these different patterns as well Now, one of the things with Canva is it says free and then they also have some that are paid I if you use Canva this is just a quick tip I really recommend sticking with the free ones because the paid ones have some different licensing restrictions and if you're going to be using your designs and selling them on things and making money sometimes there's some restrictions there a uh, great thing too about Canva is you can also upload your own designs as well so if you find some graphics you want to use somewhere else you, you don't have to just use what they have okay so let's go ahead here and I think I just want to keep this um, simple with just like a really uh, bright background so let's go ahead and use this and then I'm going to go here to elements and you'll see they have photos frames shapes lines illustrations and can photographs be uploaded to Canva yes you can upload uh, if you come here you can upload your own images here and those can include photos as well so let's say we want to do a counting uh, deck for children and as you saw earlier I like cats so we maybe we'll, we would start our first card deck design and we would actually do something that says one cat maybe with the number one or something like that so if you go to illustrations here I would type in cat and you can see here they have some different free illustrations they have photos they have clip art and let's go ahead and use this one here and then I might add a little bit of text here and uh, let's do this and then you can just drag and drop it and you can come up here and uh, do come on go up there go up there there we go you can uh, pick your font size things like that and we could say one cat and then maybe we would make that a little bit bigger and uh, we could even maybe do bold I'm not sure if it's gonna let me do bold but anyways you get the impression there oh that's cool Dr. Bird he's a cat behavioralist I love that <laughs> well I have to say Harvey the one you saw at the beginning of the presentation is lying on his back looking at me as I'm doing this being very very cute so he's definitely an inspiration for me so we could have one cat and then maybe what we would also add here is we would just add um, or we might even just leave it like that just because it's more for younger people and we want to keep it easy keep it simple but maybe we would go here and add some lines you could do something with borders uh, something along those lines and like I said you probably are thinking hey I could make mine look so much better and I'm sure you could because I'm just you know I'm just not somebody who is very graphically inclined uh, so yours I'm sure would look super way better than mine would <laughs> so let's say I wanted to copy that and then what you can do is trying to move it around you could take it and I think you can get actual borders too so we'll just leave that line up there maybe just because I don't want to mess around too much with it so you could have something really simple like this one of the things I want to do and you'll see why in a minute is I sort of want to move everything in away from the edges so it's sort of more in the middle of the design okay so what I have the options of doing with this is I could add a new page I could copy this and um, I could also save this as well so there's a lot of different things that you can do here now if I want to go ahead and use this for a deck design I'm done designing this I'll go ahead and download it and you can do PNG which is what I recommend for card deck designs and you can also do a PDF as well so I'm gonna go ahead here and download this 
And then I'm just going to go over to one of the printing sites and upload it and show how easy it is to create your actual design here. So hold on a moment. Let me go over here. Pause my screen. Now I was talking quite a bit about new technology and this is really why the average layperson who has very little design experience can create card decks and sell them. That's one of the first pieces I was showing you is using a tool like Canva which is a cutting edge design program. But now we have the printing technology where we can take our designs that we created and we can upload them to different companies or certain companies where they will take it and you can just create your card deck pretty, pretty much right online and they will build it all for you. And uh, this is really exciting because this did not used to be possible. You would have to go to like your local printer and you'd have to print, you know, do very detailed uh, specs and things like that and you would have to order like a thousand copies up front <laughs> and now you don't have to do any of that. You can actually go online, you can start out with doing something much smaller like even a print on demand where you're just fulfilling the sales as they're coming in and then if you want to do a little bit more you can do that um, you know if you start seeing some sales so the the ability to do that has really changed and has opened up some some very profitable opportunities for us as e-commerce sellers as publishers as content creators so on this site here uh, this is one of the sites that I like for playing cards you'll see I talked a little bit about pixel sites here the minimum resolution 816 by uh, uh, um, 1110 and that's for the what they're looking for for the minimum resolution so that's why I was able to know what pixel size to do because I was just working backwards from my, my uh, card deck size so if I upload the image you would just go here and let me get it here and then I would upload it you can see I have sort of a messy computer. Come on, let me move this over here. I have a so open and then it'll upload here. And then all I have to do is drag it over to here. And there it is. And then I would just go in and start uploading my other cards. You go to the next step. Now you see I mentioned, and this probably could be pulled down even a little bit more, we have the line here, which is why I wanted to move everything sort of in the middle so we wouldn't have things cut off. So if I was actually going to be doing this, I would probably go back and pull that in just a little bit more. But there you go. In about you know five to ten minutes, I was able to create a, a card and then I was able to upload it. And then I would just have to do that and then you would have your deck and you would be ready to go and I just want to stress again that this is something that anybody can do with having no design experience I do recommend you have you know some con your concept and some ideas before you actually do this uh, you know or you can just mess around because it's super fun too it's super fun to actually um, play around and do different design sty sizes and styles and things like that. So um, what do you think of that? Let me know in the box. Uh, did you think that was easy? Did, is that something you think that you could do is, is design a, a decks like that? Great. Gail says it's easy. Java says awesome. Uh, oh yes, looks like fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, doing uh, card decks is a lot of fun. I can do this. Yeah, I think pretty much anybody could do this. Um, if if uh, and it's very straightforward because you just have to basically drag and drop, download your design, and then upload it. And the great thing is, is you don't have to start from scratch each time either because you can save your templates and then do it. So let's say for example you were doing a um, like I was starting to show you, you were doing some type of uh, counting educational card deck. Well, it's really easy to do the two. You would just go ahead in and change out to two. You know, you could keep it cats or something else, and then you would just add the two things, but you could keep everything else the same. And as far as your um, the backs of your card decks, even though I'm, I'm out of there right now, I think you saw in the backgrounds that they had a lot of different uh, patterns and textures for the backgrounds. So you could just have your card deck back be one of those textures or patterns, and that's really what the card decks look like. So, um, you know, I 
I think anybody who had any, even just the vaguest idea, could put together a, a basic card deck in, in, in a very small amount of time and get it out there and get it ready for, for sale. Hey, Amy? Yes. You, you know what? I'm always looking at different things because I have four children, right? Two uh, very younger and two very older. So I'm always looking for ways to get like my kids and my family involved with just business in general, right? Like online marketing and get getting them uh, involved with entrepreneurship. I think that this would be something awesome that uh, if you have children, you can get them involved with it as well because the creativity that's that well not the creativity but the creative part of it right just designing out the cards I could see my children and they all have different personality types but I could see all of them being interested in something like this just because there's there tends to be a little fun aspect to it as you were putting these things together it looked pretty cool so if you have children this might be something that you can use to finally get them to see why you're so excited about online marketing or entrepreneurship, right? It might be an easy way to bring them in as well. Absolutely. I just says uh, ideas are racing in my head. And that's what I found. And once I start showing people this is that so many people are getting great ideas for their own businesses or their own interests or for their kids. I mean, you know, I like cats, so I did mine with cats, but I know um, if someone here is talking about the golf swing, so yeah, they could do the golf ones. Uh, if you were, um, you know, doing, let's say you were starting to do some journals, you could do uh, ones that had, uh, you know, journal prompts or questions on a card, on a card. Um, that's a, another great thing too. Uh, you know, you don't even have to have elaborate uh, photos or illustrations or anything like that. It's really the sky is the limit in terms of, you know, putting things on card decks. So yeah, that's a that's a great idea. So you might be asking yourself, well, what about fulfillment? Well, a lot of these publishing um, these services uh, actually will do the shipping for you, and that's worldwide. And you can also have Amazon ship for you. It doesn't matter where you live. So you can sell these on multiple marketplaces, Amazon, eBay, Etsy. Uh, one of the other really great things about the doing the print-on-demand uh, card decks is it really gives you the opportunity to test out a market. So let's say you have a cool idea. Uh, instead of investing, you know, thousands of dollars and getting a bunch of card decks printed up, what you can do is you could say, okay, I'm going to design this or have somebody do it and then get it up there and then you could just, you know, do a listing and do print on demand and if it starts selling, then you could, you know, get a, get a, get a, maybe a little bit larger order and then send them to Amazon for FBA or something like that where Amazon's fulfilling it for you. But uh, one of the, the, the companies that I like, they will actually fulfill for you so you just give them your customers uh, shipping information and then they'll send it right out and I I believe they only charge a dollar extra on top of what they normally do for that type of service so it makes it really easy and cost-effective to be able to expand and then if you have something that's doing well you know you can get more done but you don't have to start out with getting you know thousands of decks printed at once you can just start out doing print on demand and then scale up from there uh, Pat says gardening would be good on a card deck. Yeah, I agree. Gardening, you know, you could ha even have them divided up into seasons, like you know, preparing your garden for spring, winter, summer, fall, or you know, vegetable gardening or whatever. I mean, like I was saying, I think pretty much anything that you can think of would would do well on a card deck. Uh, you know, for kids, adults, different niches. It just anything that you're doing, you can put it on a card deck. And there's a uh, not you know that level of competition there because very few of these publishers, very few of these e-commerce sellers are actually doing card decks, but there is a definitely a big demand for them. So we are in a you know great position where we can fulfill that demand because of the technology that's available. So I've given you sort of a bird's eye view, a little bit of an insight on this really great market. And what I want to share with you right now is more information about my in-depth uh, training that's going to be available for a very limited time. And it's called Easy Card Deck Profits. And it comes with a number of modules. And what I'm going to go over now is I'm going to share with you what's covered in each of these. And I'm really excited about this because there's just not 
anything or very few things that I've ever seen out there that is about uh, creating and selling card decks uh, because of, of it being so cutting edge. So in module one, I'm going to be sharing with you how you can get ideas for card decks that sell. Uh, we've actually come up with quite a few card deck ideas just right here, which is amazing. How you can create awesome designs using free drag and drop software and royalty free images. So I also share where you can get uh, many royalty free images too and uh, how you can use different free tools so you can actually just do drag and drop like I was showing you and how you can create print quality designs without having to spend money on expensive graphic designers uh, I share how you can get things that look like a designer you know spent thousands of hours on it without having to hire an expensive designer <laughs> how you can repurpose content you already have how you can connect with eager buyers in your niche. This is really important because I actually share in this training multiple places where you can sell your card deck. And I'm not just talking about big places like Amazon either. I'm talking about a lot of other marketplaces that are more specialty marketplaces that once you have your card deck done, you can sell them there. And I also connect and share with you a lot of different niche places and niche groups where people are looking for card decks. I know um, uh, uh, Jillian just mentioned there's collecting groups on Facebook. Yeah, there's a lot of people who are really into different topics and card decks and things like that, and I share that all with you. I also cover where you can promote your card decks for free, how to find card deck, uh, card deck ideas that are already popular and in demand. Um, how to easily create them, the best marketplaces to sell and produce them, where where you can get them sell, selling fast so you don't have to wait you know months or years to start seeing a profit on this, and how you can actually add your deck to these marketplaces that already have thousands of people visiting and browsing every day. So that insider information is included with module one along with these uh, designs and, and getting your card deck created. Now, I also go a little, even deeper into Module 2, and I share where you can find thousands of free high-resolution images to create your decks fast, because you do need to have a certain image resolution on these uh, so you can make sure that they're print quality. And I also share a, a secret software where you can download print-ready uh, images 10 times faster because sometimes it can take a while to go through and find the right images. So I actually share a really cool tool that lets you find and download these print-ready images that you need really fast. How to find unique, uh, high-quality designs for free and for cheap. The easiest format to work with, where you can find it. How to keep that print quality resolution that I've been talking about because that is really important and how you can create more complicated designs from simple graphic elements you know so you can really build on just very simple elements and make them look much more expensive and complicated I also share some strategies for creating cards without image artwork I did mention that briefly but there's some really cool types of cards you can create that don't even use images or graphics and these are really cool especially if you do want to get some decks out quickly and you don't want to um, even though it's super easy to drag and drop these images if you just want to say okay I don't even want to deal with that I just want to get something out there I'm going to share with you how you can create these cards without having images at all I cover even more rebrandable content strategies so you can create and publish your cards fast so you can use and reuse other types of content, how you can grow your brand and get more visibility, how to leverage popular games. Uh, this is really powerful because it's really building on things that are already popular, what people are already doing, what people are already playing and how you can take that and leverage that to create your own cards. And then I also provide more over-the-shoulder uh, tutorials as I create printable card deck designs. So I go more in-depth and show you some more with that as well. Module 3 is all about uh, fulfillment by Amazon. This is a step-by-step -step video training uh, where I go into how you can actually sell things on Amazon and get set up with Amazon fulfillment. So you can discover how to market your products, how to use Amazon FBA. So this is really the nuts and bolts of saying, okay, well, you have your card decks. If you want to have it completely hand off, what you can do is you can send those into Amazon and have them ship for you. And there's a lot of benefits to using fulfillment by Amazon. So with this training, you are going to be able to master Amazon FBA and be able to get your card decks to Amazon so they can ship them out for you and then you don't have to worry about it. Now I've been talking quite a bit about graphics and in this module, you actually, I'm going to be giving you over 2,500 
graphics that you can use. These are high resolution and they allow you to quickly customize and create your unique card deck designs. So they include objects, dividers, flourishes, animals. We were talking you know, about animals and creating animal that things, line and circle graphics. So these are these building block elements that you can use to uh, take and create uh, very high-end looking uh, sophisticated card designs really easily because I'm giving you all of the graphics here and you just have to simply take them uh, and use the ones you want, upload them, and then put them on your card deck. But I'm not done with that. I talked a little bit about public domain content. I'm a really big fan of public domain content. And this is free content you can use. What I've actually created and I'm going to show you a quick demo here, is a really neat public domain dashboard. This is a software tool. Now, it is designed for Windows, but you can use it on a Mac with a, the free Wine uh, application, and I actually have um, training for that all included with this. So, um, it's, And I also have a database, so if you don't want to use the actual dashboard app, you don't have to, but what I've done is I've put together free public domain books, articles, uh, images, artwork, uh, multimedia that you can actually use. And I'm going to show you uh, here what it looks like because it's really cool. So let me get out of this. And this is, let me show my screen here. This is the public domain dashboard. So you simply double click it and you'll see it has photos, illustrations, books, multimedia, government resources, training. You can even suggest a site as well. If you found a cool site and you, you know, want to be generous and share it with everybody else, you can suggest it here and then I can put it into the future updates that I do. And also information on copyright. So the way this works is if you click here, it'll uh, go ahead and open up the list of actual uh, sites that I have and this is updated periodically so you can see these are all sites and they are categorized I have some general ones but they, these are all categorized where you can actually just open them up and go right to them and work and use these for your projects including your card deck designs uh, for example this is free historical stock photos so if you go here um, then you can you can uh, it'll just take you right to the site there. So this is great because um, you just have a huge amount of resources that are public domain right at your fingertips, and you can use them to uh, create you know even more content for your card decks. And you, of course, you can use them for your other projects as well. So this is uh, something that I design and put together. It's only available from me because it's my software, it's my tool, and I'm including it here with your uh, the card deck package because I think it'll just uh, make your job even easier. Now I've also included some really great bonuses. Uh, this one, I think you saw how easy it is to use Canva, but if you want to dig into it a little bit deeper, I'm also including this. It's a quick and easy guide to using Canva, and it uh, just goes a little bit more into how to navigate and move around Canva, how to um, you know add and edit the text, backgrounds, and more. So this is like a, a quick start guide, so if you want to get up to speed with it fast, you can do that. And I've also included this really cool guide. This is very popular. People love this. It's uh, your guide to photo editing with Photoshop. I don't really use Photoshop. I tend to, st to stay away from it. But I know a lot of people like Photoshop. And what this does is it shows you how you can get up to speed very quickly with Photoshop if that's something you also might want to use to create your card deck designs. So it just shows you how you can do like 90% of the things you might want to do in Photoshop quickly and easily, uh, such as cropping, adding and editing, and things like that without having to you know, spend hours taking some type of Photoshop class. Uh, so this is also included too, if in case you're, you think, hey, I like Canva, but you know, I'm already using uh, Photoshop, or I want to use Photoshop, well, you can, you can with this. So with Easy Card Deck Profits, you get the Module 1, uh, Card Deck Publishing Profits, where I go into how to design and create your card decks, and I also provide a printing and marketing information and places, so once your card deck is done, you can actually sell your card deck without having to say, oh, I don't know what to do with it, because that's one of the things I found is a lot of people get excited, and then they don't really know how to get their stuff out there. Well, you are set with this because I give you uh, I, literally hundreds of places here that you're going to be able to promote your deck and also a lot of different marketplaces where you can sell your deck as well. So that's a $67 value with that training and then module two I go in 
even further with more advanced strategies on how to use different types of content quickly and easily, how to get great images, how to find more images. That's $77 value. I also include FBA training, FBA mastery, so you can actually sell your cards on Amazon and have them fulfill it for you. And one of the things too about FBA that I'm not sure if many people know about is you can actually use Amazon to fulfill your orders on other places. So let's say you want to sell these on eBay as well, which I think can be a good marketplace. Well, if you have your card decks through FBA, you can actually have Amazon send them to your buyers on eBay too. That's a $97 value. I'm also including this 2500 plus huge vector graphics package, so you will never run out of graphics uh, to use for your card deck. And also you can use these for anything else you have as well. They're not just, of course, restricted just to your card deck designs. That's a $77 value. And my exclusive public domain dashboard, where pretty at your fingertips you have a, a wide variety of high quality curated free content that you can access with just a few clicks of your mouse and you can access uh, public domain um, artwork, uh, con articles, books, uh, videos, pretty much the sky's the limit with that and that's a $97 value. And I've also included my guide to photo editing with Photoshop and a quick and easy guide to using Canva. So this includes um, the five modules and the two bonuses. And it's a total real-world value of $459, and it's because it's extensive with this training. It's taking you from the very beginning of starting your card deck design or having just not even an idea, going from your idea, niche selection, so forth, all the way up into actually selling your card decks. And then I'm also including these tools that are going to help you do that even quicker and even easier. So I just want to take a moment here and uh, share with you some feedback of what real people say about card deck training. Uh, Barbara says it's worth more than its charge. Uh, Glenn says I'm so glad I bought this. Great product. Very well done. Okay. Uh, Newt Mutman says constructive and easy to read. Exciting. Uh, Gwen says exciting. <laughs> Chris says information to help fulfill a goal, a dream. Leslie says great product, idea, valuable resources, and uh, now I can create them myself. So. Uh, my card deck training gets a lot of great feedback because it really um, is essential in helping people take any of the assets they have, whether it's other people's stuff like private label rights content or public domain or whether it's uh, their own book or blog and it helps them create new additional income streams quickly and easily and also getting out there in front of the herd, in front of the crowd so they can connect with a lot of these buyers and these marketplaces that aren't being served because people want card decks, they are, they are demanding card decks and there's just not that many card decks out there especially in different types of niches. So what I've done is I've put together a special VIP offer for you uh, because you are a VIP of Thai. And as I was telling you, this is a $459 real world value. And it's not going to be $197, which would be over 50% off, but for a limited time, and this is going to go, um, I believe, just for the next few days through the weekend or so, um, we're going to be doing this a very limited time at $97. And you're going to get all the five modules um, that I went over uh, plus the two bonuses as well. So I'm going to go ahead here and put this in the chat box and then uh, I'll go ahead and take some questions as well. So I'm going to put this in the box here. Uh, if somebody could let me know if the link works, that would be fantastic. And I'm actually checking it out now, Amy. Let's see here. What do you have? So, folks, what do you think of this? I think this is a great concept here. It's definitely something that anyone can do. It's definitely, it's also, so I've got a few businesses where I'm thinking that this would be a good add-on um, product. It would be a good way to introduce new revenue to a business. So, no matter what you're doing right now, I think that this can apply to almost anything. If you're selling physical products, you can create something um, based around a card deck. Uh, if you're selling digital products, if you're an affiliate, and if you've got some type of a following, if you don't have one yet and you're working on that, this is a great way to build that up. So let's see. Gail says the link works great. Awesome. Thank you for that, Gail. 
Julian says, I've collected playing cards since childhood, particularly illustrated ones, and I can see plenty of possibilities. Yeah, absolutely. My youngest son also collects a lot of playing cards. Um, he collects these things for like wrestling and uh, like um, superhero figures and things like that. And it's something that I think with this, you can also create sets. So people go in, they'll buy set one, set two, so you, you constantly have repeat buyers coming in. So let's see, we've got a couple more questions coming in here. Yeah, let's see here. Dr. Bird asks, what are your terms for support, coaching, returns? Good question. Um, this has a 30-day guarantee, and I am around for support and for answering your questions. I, I try to get back to people quick, relatively quickly, uh, almost always within 24 hours. And I do, you know, if you have a specific question or something, I'm there to, to help you. Uh, as far as extended coaching, I do occasionally do one-on-one -on -one coaching, but that would be, you know, something that we would discuss separately. But uh, I have a good reputation for customer support. I, I get back to people quickly. I'm, I'm helpful, and I'm going to be around if you have any questions or anything like that. All right, and at the price point, I think that this is a no-brainer. It's definitely something to at least give a try. And she's got a 30-day money-back guarantee. Something like this, um, you can find the money to get involved with this in almost anything, right? You cut a few things out. Um, you probably have this laying around, so it's easy to get involved. The whole process is pretty simple and straightforward. So there's really no barrier here. Yeah, and that's what I find is really exciting. I went to the page here. I think somebody was saying about the link. Um, this is what it should look like if you go at the top. It says special for Tyco and VIPs only. And you'll see what I've talked about. And then at the bottom, you can go ahead and get this picked up. And I, like you said, Ty, I think that's true. Uh, it, it's really a no-brainer at this price. I was trying to make it available um, so people could get started. And I, I just do. I do think it is. It's one of these great things where you don't need a uh, technical knowledge, you just have to need to be able to follow instructions <laughs> and uh, you can put together these without having to spend a, you know, a lot of time working with the designer or anything like that. Uh, John asks, what's the average number of cards? I think it does depend more on your niche. I would say you know, 30 might be a good sort of starting point for your deck and then of course it does depend on uh, what type of deck you're doing. You know, if you're doing an educational deck uh, you know, that might be a good starting number. If you're doing, uh, you know, another certain types of decks, you might want to go up to 50. Uh, you know, so there, there is some room there. I would just also look at, see if there are other decks in your niche. I know there might not be, just because, like I said, there's more of a demand, I think, than a supply in many niches at this point. But that can, uh, you know, if there is some, that can give you an idea of what the decks are going for. Great question. Right. Go ahead. Oh, Anthony says, how much passive revenue? Well, you know, it, it's that is those types of questions are hard to answer. I will say with the decks, though, that you know, I've seen decks go anywhere online from ten dollars to almost a hundred dollars. It just it depends on the type of deck you're in, the niche you're doing, and you know, the value that you're adding there. Uh, what's great with this, though, is that once you get your deck actually uploaded. Uh, there's very little actual work you need to do, especially if you're working with, you know, Amazon or one of these companies to do the fulfillment of your orders for you. And because you don't have to hire a designer, there's very, uh, there's not a lot of time you need to put in, you know, when putting the decks together. And it is fun, you know, the time you are putting in is also fun too. So I think it has a very good um, sort of ratio of effort, you know, versus the, the income level as, as far as, as this goes. Dr. Bird says he's in. Awesome. Thank you. That's great. Oh, I want to also put in um, my customer service if uh, anybody has any type of um, problems. Uh, you can write my customer service. I'm going to put this in here and uh, get in touch with me and uh, I will get you taken care of if you have any issues with your order or anything like that.
All right, lots of people jumping in here. So let's see. We're going to be on for a few more minutes. What other questions do you folks have about this process? What else can you think about? I like to say, as you know, that there's no such thing as a dumb question. So any questions that you have, any feedback, throw it out there and we'll definitely cover it. Okay, looks like most people are able to go to the page there, get the link. Uh, do you have publishers you recommend? Yes, I do recommend publishers in the training. Uh, there are some that do specialize in more in some things than others. And the ones that I recommend, um, you know, there's a couple different levels. The ones I recommend first are the ones that allow you to do the drag and drop where you just upload your design like I showed you because I think that's really the easiest for, uh, you know, to get started with. And then there are, of course, some other companies that might do something that are a little bit more specialized, and I have some recommendations in there for those. But uh, the drag and drop technology, I think, is the one as, as you know is really what we're looking for. So that's uh, the ones you know that I want to I want to recommend as far as that goes. Okay, and then I talking to have somebody talking about creating a, a, an art deck where you could have something where you have like um, instructions on the back and then uh, like the movement or the graphic on the front. Yeah, you can totally set it up like that. Um, you know, I think sometimes of decks where you all the back has the same design, but if you're doing more uh, like a how-to type deck, you could certainly have it where you might have you know what you're talking about a graphic of what you're talking about on one side and then you have the tips or the instructions on the other side you know so it's really the sky's the limit with that you don't have to have it just be a certain one one way or another uh, thanks Gail much appreciated uh, Joe asked information about packaging these card decks yes the companies that I also recommend they will do your packaging for you as well so if you want to get a box done and you know you don't have to have a box for your decks but I do think it does look a little bit more professional if you go online and look at card decks most of them have a box well they will include they will do a box for you as well um, and uh, they will they will include that with that so you can get you know some different things with your decks and uh, most of them will include a box and then also if you want to have an accompanying booklet with that you can have they will do that too so you don't have to you know worry and like run around and go like okay I have decks printed one place but now I have to get boxes uh, the, these are really like an all-in-one sort of thing and you just check like you know what you want to have basically so you can even include a booklet with this that now this gets even more interesting um, that gives you even more opportunities there's so much that you can do with that like including upsells and uh, just a lot you can include many sales letters in that booklet format uh, and a question for you Amy and this is coming from me can you just do like cello wrap like cello fan wrap instead of the box Yes, yes, you can. You can do cello wrap, and that's really the default. Um, you know, so the cello wrap, very base, the basic. That's the default, and then additional options include a box and the the booklet. And what another great thing about the booklet too is that the booklet, if you do include a booklet, it allows you to get into some other categories that you might not get into with just the the, the cards. Um, and I go a little bit more to that in the training, but it's just basically sort of uh, once you have a booklet, you can list that under an ISBN, and it lets you put things into books cat the book category. So there's some different interesting things you can do there in terms of positioning and categories. Very interesting. And then with that, you can e actually, you know, you could possibly get distribution. I've got some products that we use, Bowker, B O W K E R dot com, to get us listed in. Um, libraries if you can find one of those anymore and uh, bookstores traditional bookstores just by having that ISBN so this this is uh, something that you can actually take a few different angles with yeah, exactly cool. it's very it's very flexible now asked about the UK uh, the companies I recommend do uh, are based in primarily in the US but they do fulfillment around the world so if you live in the UK if your customers live in the UK or other places it's not an issue um, the only thing you know if you want to get some sent to your house first where then you send them somewhere else you know then you you have to have them sent over there but if you're just gonna have them send it directly to your customers it's not an issue with that got it all right whatever questions do we have here looks like uh, we still have a good amount of people that are holding on so there's got to be some questions there we've got a good amount of people that are coming in uh, and joining us with this program as well. 
So post your questions here, ladies and gents. I think if you have like a book series as well, I know a lot of my uh, followers are publishers and authors. If you have a book series, you can also have a set of cards that has the different characters within your series. Um, and then some of your traits and things like that. That would be a different way of building up a, a following. Yeah, that's a great opportunity, a way to do it for people who are doing fiction, a fiction series. You know, you can have uh, have cards with that. I mean, you can think a little bit about licensing. Like, think about Star Wars, for example. So, Star Wars, you just have you not just have the movie, but you have like books and audiobooks, and you have games, and you have. I'm pretty sure there's some Star Wars card deck games out there too. So you could do the same thing with whatever universe that you're creating as well. You could uh, do these different opportunities where you're licensing your content and putting it into different formats. And I think that's great. I also think that's great if you're doing things that are, uh, you know, nonfiction. If you're a professional, if you offer any types of services, if you do uh, any type of self-help or how-to or uh, anything like that. If you're a consultant, I mean, anything like that, I think could benefit from having that additional uh, branding by having the card decks as well. Absolutely, I think I, I have another business where a good portion of uh, our list, or not a good portion of them, but everyone um, that's involved here are writers. So I think, you know, creating a card deck of, of plots plot twist and things like that might go over well so that's what I'm gonna try here with this <laughs> I like that idea yeah. yeah you're right you could do plots you could do characters you know absolutely so anything that's gonna give your that that potential writer or author an idea a way to spark some creativity there yeah uh, somebody says here they want the link it's in the chat I will put it again and um, somebody says they clicked and the button, I would just try it again, the add to cart button, let me see, should be working, let me click on it. Sometimes you might you might have to you know try it in a different uh, browser if you're having issues, but I did get the checkout page here when I clicked the button, so please try again or try in a different browser, and if you still have issues, you're welcome, of course, to um, send me a customer service email as well. Uh, Julian says, yeah, there's Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, Hobbit, yeah, there's all kinds of different uh, things that you can do um, and even if you thought well I like to do some type of game thing but I don't really have any ideas well you could just do branded cards you could do branded poker type cards you know if you wanted to just have cards that have some type of branding or some type something interesting on them without actually you know having to come up with a, your whole uh, game setup and things like that but I do include some training in here for, uh, you know, piggybacking off popular games that are in the public domain and some uh, ideas for coming up with, uh, you know, games that you can with card decks. Uh, we talked a little bit about Exploding Kittens. Uh, that's a really, really, really popular. Um, Ty, are you familiar with the Oatmeal? Have you seen any of his cartoons or anything? They're Not hilarious. at all. Oh, they're I'm hilarious. Sure. <laughs> they're they're super funny and so he he has a following he's a cartoonist and so he came up with this card game and you know just became hugely popular so I recommend checking um, checking exploding kittens or the oatmeal out on Amazon so you can see some of the stuff absolutely Len asks is this training live it's live I'm here it is live we are live <laughs> I don't think you could get any more live than that <laughs> that would be awesome though if you had a way of, of you know interjecting a spoken comment whenever someone typed in is this live <laughs> if you were able to do that on like a non-live or evergreen or replay webinar uh, <laughs> that would be pretty cool <laughs> Yeah, so people love these card decks, and you can get um, you know into this marketplace because there's just like I said, there's just not a ton of people doing card decks right now. You know, as word gets out, that might change over time, which is why it's great to be in now and be more of an early adopter. Uh, you know, and be able to use these companies that are like, hey, you know, we'll do everything for you. Just upload your card design. You know, you want to be able to uh, take advantage of that. Because again, you know, I, I 
that didn't used to be like that. You, you would have to go to your local offset printer and fill out very complicated design specifications and order, you know, 500 to 1,000 copies. <laughs> so the fact that we don't have to do that anymore is really exciting, I think. Yeah, the game has totally changed. I was just talking to someone uh, the other day. Nowadays, it's extremely uh, a lot easier to make money online, and plus you have so many different options, right? So it's 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 just totally changed. When I first got started, um, you had to, like you said, go to an offset printer to do you know simple printing jobs and building out a website, right? You didn't have all of the different programs. You had to know a little bit of code, or so. It's totally changed. Yeah, definitely. Gail asked a good question. Does the cost go up printing? No. What, what, what your card deck costs are going to be based on, they don't charge you extra for using four color, which again is great, but it will depend on how big, how many um, cards you have in your deck, so they're going to charge you more based on more cards, and how big your the card decks are, because they now have all kinds of card deck sizes. So I, you know, I didn't even really talk too much about that, but that's also really exciting. You can do like mini cards, like tiny little small cards that people like because they're so cute and small. Or you can do like bigger cards, like big, big giant cards, like sort, sort of like the coloring uh, cards that I showed you that are more like a notebook size. So there's a huge range of card deck sizes. I mean, there's also the traditional card deck size. There's the like the tarot or oracle card deck size, which is a little bit bigger. So those are primarily what the, the, the costs will be, will be based on how many cards you have in your deck and um, what size they are. And then, of course, if you do additional add-ons, uh, you know that's gonna uh, they're gonna factor that into it as well got it let's see any more questions coming in folks what else do you have here uh, P says I just jumped on can you put the buy link in the chat box for me? Okay, great. I just added it here again, so you should see it. And just to refresh uh, memory, you're getting this five module. Uh, the first one covers uh, getting your cards created and published, and the second one I go with the second module I go into, and also covers marketing because I cover where you can promote your card deck and where you can sell your deck, which is really important. Uh, the second module, I go more into uh, getting uh, great images and how you can get your designs looking great and also creating more complicated designs and doing things where you can create your cards even if you don't want to do any type of design work whatsoever. So that's also including too, included in that as well. Uh, module three is all about selling on uh, a fulfillment by Amazon. Uh, this may be even something you want to do with something other than cards, but it's great for card decks. If you if you start with print on demand and then you want to move up a little bit more, you can get some and send them into Amazon. And this is a step by step training. And then module four, you get 2,500 vector graphics. Uh, these are really cool. They come in a wide variety of different things. You can see a, bit, a few of them here on the screen. And that's going to, again, help you create these card deck designs really quickly and easily. They're all print uh, high resolution. And then module five is my public domain dashboard that I've put together. And it basically allows you to find nearly unlimited public domain content. I have it all categorized. You just double click the software tool open it up, click one of the categories, and then a whole uh, list of links will come up of where you can go to get that type of content, which I think is really cool. Oh, is there going to be a recorded replay? Uh, yes, we are hoping to have a replay here. It should be recording as we speak. Uh, Len says, um, is my $97 trading live? No, it's not live because it's a mix of PDF training because I find a lot of people want to have everything written down like step by step and then I do have video, some video over the shoulder tutorials as well and then it's uh, you know elements like the graphics and the the computer software too the software so it's a mix of different elements um, but I am available here live if you have any additional questions or anything of course. Uh, no no the vector graphics you can use in Canva they are PNG I believe for the most part, so they do not have to be used in Photoshop. You can use them in any type of easy graphic program. Thanks, Joe. Uh, Joe says great webinar. I appreciate that. 
Gail says, wonderful webinar. Thank you. Just taking a kind of a last look through here for questions. And while you're doing that, Amy, I'm going to post the URL into the questions box again. Thank you, Dr. Bird. That's because it's been a, got this excited about a new product. Well, thank you. I think this is fun and exciting, and uh, it's. Uh, just, just fun and exciting too because I think of the different potential and the opportunities that are available as well. Yeah, and I think there's something to be said about creating your own, you know, like a, a tangible product that you can actually hold and play with and touch and smell if you want it to. You know, there's just something about that. There's a, there's a sense of accomplishment, this proud feeling that comes along with that. Yes, I agree. And I think there is a big interest level of that now with people wanting to, who are sort of immersed in digital technology and digital stuff all day, they want to be able to have something tangible. Oh, one thing I wanted to mention is that the delivery, when you get this, um, it's all in a membership area and each module is, you know, you, 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 you log into the members area and then you'll see each module broken down. And then you also do have the option to download everything. I, will, I recommend going through the, to the, the member module where you can download everything as well, but that way you can work your way through the modules, you don't get overwhelmed. But you do you do have the option to just put everything on your computer too if you want to. And then, as I said, it's it's a mix. It's a mix of um, written with step by step, uh, uh, some over the shoulder tutorials, and then you know some assets like the graphics and the software as well. All right, so it seems like that's about it with the questions here. Um, going once, going twice. We're going to give you about another 60 seconds. If you have a question, you can go in and post it into the questions box. If you are not in yet, I'll put the URL in once again so you can go in and get access to this program. So let's see, I sent it there to everyone. Yeah, an FBA fulfilling other site sales. That's that's uh, that's the way you want to go, especially once you start to crank out some orders. Yeah, it just really takes a load off. I mean, print on demand is great for testing stuff out, but then once you say, okay, this is I'm selling regularly, let's send it to FBA and let's have them deal with it. Then you can go on and start creating your next deck. <laughs> Thank Absolutely. you, Nat. <laughs> uh, this looks fun to do, um, thank, without even the monetization aspect. I agree, it's fun and it's you can monetize it. And thanks for a great webinar. Well, thank you. And this is limited time pricing. This is a special just for you guys. So this is going to be um, not available uh, with the limited time pricing. It will be going up. So if this is something you are interested in, uh, jump in now. There is the 30-day guarantee. And then uh, we have that link here. And then my email is there too um, in the chat if you have any uh, questions or anything as well. All right, so with that said, we are going to close this out. Amy, this has been fun. This has been very, very, uh, it's something, again, that's very different but very doable for everyone. So I appreciate you coming in and sharing what it is that you're doing and some of your students and the success that they're having. So we've got some folks that are on here that are on board. If you want to watch a replay, hopefully the recording is working, so we'll have a replay for you. Um, as well and if you are watching the replay get in right now and don't delay uh, is there a URL do you have like a slide with a URL that we can give everyone who might be watching 
of a replay or who might be sitting on a fence right now? Uh, the replay will, um, oh, so they can go to uh, check out what's available with this. Yeah, let me go ahead and... Because uh... I know we probably have some folks that are sitting on a fence and uh, just to be able to give them a... Uh, a URL really quickly and folks if you if you are on a fence take a screenshot or write down this URL so afterwards you have access to it if you want to get on yeah let me go ahead and I will give you the replay URL and the replay will be up there shortly so let me go ahead and get that for you uh, just takes a minute here and I'll put that in the box as well not a problem. And if maybe if you want to freeze it on that last frame that you had of your uh, PowerPoint, that would be yeah, pretty cool. Let's do that too. So you can see that. And then let me give you this URL here. I only have about 20 million windows open. <laughs> oh, where here we go? Here we go. Story of my life. <laughs> Let me just able check the link works here. This is the replay page, and so once we actually get um, uh, the uh, this up here, this will be available. So let me go ahead and get this in here. So that's the replay. And uh, we'll have that available um, with the video here uh, relatively soon. Awesome. All right. So that's the, that's the page you want to take a screenshot of if you want to ensure that you have that link. And if you haven't written it down already. Great. And with that said, Amy, we appreciate you, your time, and you coming in and sharing some great information. Let's give Amy a big send off, everyone, and let her know how much we appreciate her. And with oh, thank that said, you. we will have the replay out shortly. Great. Thank, thank you, you, everybody. It was my pleasure. Thank you, Ty. You're welcome. Bye bye.